Hi everyone and welcome along. Last time we learnt how to paint some simple autumn trees, so now we're going to put them into a lovely misty autumn landscape. So grab your paints and let's get started. Today I'm working with a piece of paper that has been taped down um, to stop the paper from warping because we're going to use quite a bit of water. Um, you could also get this effect from using a block of watercolour paper where it's glued down uh, around most of the page uh, which keeps it all in place as well. So we need some larger brushes today. I've got my one stroke large brush and I've got a, a sort of was well, it's I think of it like a mop it's not technically a mop brush it's just a very very large pointed round but these two brushes are going to be very helpful for our, our sort of getting washes now we're going to do a lovely autumnal landscape um, in the last session I painted these trees and we, I really think it'd be nice to pop them in to a really simple misty autumn morning so I'm going to begin just by wetting the paper with my one stroke brush and I'm only wetting it to the point where it's just got a nice bit of moisture all over there. Um, it doesn't need to be sopping wet, we don't need puddles of water, we just need a nice damp surface to allow for some really nice simple landscape painting techniques to give us a misty distant background. Now I painted a landscape uh, in my quick fix series in getting started with landscape painting and we're going to use the similar premise of that. So I'm just mixing up a sort of a rather bleak grey blue using cobalt blue deep and a bit of transparent turquoise in with my general shadow mix and I'm going to use my large mop brush and I'm just going to run a few of these colours across. Now I'm not going to sort of overly work them, I like the idea of the sky sort of misting into nothing, but what I will do is I will sort of reflect that in the water because we're going to have a watery scene. So that's all you need to do, you really don't need to do much more than that because we've wet the paper, but what we are going to do is we're going to put a few trees around the edge of the lake. I'm just allowing page to sort of take its time but now I am going to pop in some blobs of colour which are going to suddenly feather out and create beautiful trees. So just by dabbing them down I'm going to get a bit of red in there, I want to get some different coloured trees. They're getting a little smaller in the distance and then they're going to get larger again. Oops! Don't worry, we can sort that out. Don't make a much bigger tree there. Okay, so we want essentially creating the sense of a, a line getting smaller. Now, this is actually quite a useful moment really. If you do suddenly drop a bit of paint onto your paper like that, don't panic. All I'm going to do is take a little bit of uh, kitchen roll and just blot it. And you do get left with a little bit of something, so what you do, get a clean brush and some clean water. I'm just going to wake up that colour there. So I'm just dabbing it, there we go, and I take my kitchen roll again, clean bit, and just gradually remove it slowly like that. Now it's going to sort of dry and blend, which is just going to be absolutely fine, and what we'll do is we can just put a little something over the top of it. But yeah, essentially, don't panic. Don't try sort of rubbing in with your brush too much. Um, you don't want to make too much of a, a sort of thing of it, especially when you're working on lovely, beautiful blends like this. So just leave it alone and we will sort of deal with it as we go through. So I'm just gonna let this dry 
for a while. Uh, uh, we've got this lovely sort of autumnal uh, vision around a lake of beautiful trees off in the distance, a really lovely misty landscape to start off with. This is now dried 100%, it's got to be completely dry. So if you want to be brave and, and do that, <laughs> make sure make sure you don't suddenly ruin a painting you just spent lots of time on by uh, smudging your finger across it. So give it some time, go and have a cup of tea or something. Right, I'm mixing up some really uh, concentrated, quite dark grey shadowy mix with Burnt Sienna and Payne's Grey. I've got a size 4 brush and I'm going to be painting in, I've got some, going to have some trees uh, in the foreground and things, um, but I'm actually going to paint my ground in not, not too dark a colour and I'm going to use my size 8 pointed round. This is a, a Princeton round, the Aqua Elite brush. Sometimes I sort of try out these new brushes and bring them into my kit and I, I like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna have a bit more a bit more concentration there. And this time we're we're actually gonna blend down blend down into nothing. And I'm also just gonna have a few Matching that up there. So that's just a little bit more of a distant one. So we're just sort of mixing up the techniques here of just getting in little bits of sort of area around the edge of this lake. But essentially I just wanted my my sort of foreground bit of land not to be so dark because um, I really want to contrast it with having the nice strong trees. Um, okay so another bit of waiting getting this to dry won't take quite so long as before and then we can get on with our trees. So I'm going to be layering up little trees and we're going to begin beginning with some just off in the distance. I've got a size 4 tenths brush and I'm going to be using a colour in similar concentration to the uh, more faint colour that we've got here and I'm just wanting to put in some really simple trees, nice and smallish. We don't want too much going on. Maybe have a little think about what kind of trees you want to put in. Are they going to be sort of short and squat like oak trees or are we going to have something a bit sort of taller and more slender like an ash like this? Essentially you just need to begin from your central trunk and then just work your way out with all the branches. And if you haven't already seen my tutorial uh, that's just from the last session on some really uh, lovely autumn tree painting, then you really want to go and have a look at that because we're, going to, we, we're using all of those techniques. And we're just going to overlap them. So. My my um, composition is sort of uh, I'm imagining like a ginormous lake, the kind of lake you might sort of spot um, in Canada up in the mountains, and then on that lake there's little sort of clumps of little island land where we're seeing just a few little trees and little sort of banks creeping in. And then we're going to be standing ourselves on the edge of the lake, looking out 
at all of this and um, these trees here are going to be largely sparse the ones in the distance haven't quite started to lose their leaves yet but we're just building up layers essentially so I'm just going to carry on painting these fainter trees smaller trees just in the distance here now it's time to add in some trees in the foreground and I'm really going to create some they're not quite silhouetted because we're going to add color to them but I, I'm very keen on using a, a really strong dark rich trunk color so let's see how we go so I'm going to pop one in here first lovely and for now I'm just allowing that strong color to just cut through everything else if you want to use a brush of your choice that's fine some people like the rigger brush for long slender branches some people um, love using sort of larger brushes to, to be able to get the the control um, I'm just always a fan of a, a pointed round usually quite a small one so I'm just doing this all in one color and this tree is going to be fairly bare it's a sort of stylistic choice I suppose that we've got all that lovely orange glow in the distance of trees that maybe haven't quite got there yet and um, in the foreground we're just a little bit further on So if you haven't had a look at my tree painting tutorial from last session, go and have a look because you will learn all about how to paint your trees in just like this. These three trees um, really help sort of draw the eye into this area here, which is sort of the focal point of the piece. Um, Composition is something that um, I don't know some people feel a bit intimidated by and struggle with but all I find is there tends to be this natural um, affinity to sort of be looking into a picture just sort of just to the right of the center really I remember at school there was this big spiral uh, drawing in our maths class which basically showed you um, the best place to be and so I always with my finger just sort of mentally fill out the page of the spiral then just come in and, in and then find my focal point anyway that's a very very sort of um, rubbish way of talking to you about composition but something we could look at um, in future so I'm gonna pop some orange leaves onto my trees to make it look a little less um, sort of looks a little bit serious and a little bit nightmarish at the moment but that is what I'm trying to create is a sort of misty atmospheric autumn morning and that's why we've got the trees being really sort of faint in the background but I want to get some concentrated cadmium orange just dabbing with my size zero brush onto some branches not all but in painting with cadmium colors the joy is is they are just a little bit opaque meaning that I can paint over areas that already have a little bit of paint on them and that we can also create a little bit of a carpet of leaves which is another of the reasons why I wanted to paint in this landscape in the foreground in a fairly dilute color. And it also just helps the trees contrast. And of course the orange itself on the trees can be a varied color itself, just adding a little bit of cadmium yellow to proceeding so yeah so now just dabbing 
these pops of colour in a concentrated style onto the piece for the finishing touches. And there we've got our trees bedecked with a few leaves. But what about this little blob, you think? Well, I'm going to sort of finish off this piece with a few leaves just flying through the air. autumn is well and truly on its way. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed that one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on painting that one. And of course, if you want to never miss another video, just hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell just to the side. And we'll see you again next time. Bye.